Unlock an ancient mystery and discover the truth behind some of today's biggest headlines. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn is back at the table for more on the Josiah Manifesto. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, has an ancient mystery been unfolding before our very eyes? And what does this mean for the church? With help of today's guests, we'll dive more into how it connects to some of the biggest headlines over the last few years. First joining me around the table is April Simons. Interesting stuff today. Oh, man, good stuff. Just, yeah. man, people that watch just need to listen. I mean, it's, yeah. it's God stuff. It really is. Dorothy Newton? Yes. It's like every time, it never fails. I always learn so much. Yeah. I mean, it's truly a download. Now I'm eager to go and mm -hmm. read my Bible and look yeah. at the correlation and all that. It's so good. It's going to so be good. good. Yeah. Rachel Lamb Brown, how are you? There's a lot of headlines out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of headlines. A lot know, of things going on. I want to know what they mean. I yeah. want to know how it affects me and my family and what's yeah. going to happen next in the future. What, yeah. what do we think is going to happen based off what we know that's happened in the yeah. past. How it all connects. All the things. Good. That's, yeah, good. that's a good. Rebecca Lamb Weiss, how are you? I'm doing great. And interesting show today. We did an interesting show yesterday. We're going to continue it today. A lot of people still have questions. Yeah. A lot of people have questions. This is one of my favorite guests that we have. And yeah. I think people are going to be glued to their TV wanting to know what the follow-up is to yes. the previous show. Go get your tea <laughs> and sit down with us right now. Is that right, Cindy Murdoch? Uh, absolutely. And I think that we're seeing why it's so important that we know the Word of God and we know what it says because it does tell us God will reveal mysteries. Yeah. He will reveal those mysteries. It's true. It's true. Well, he's the New York Times bestselling author, and he's making waves again with his new book, The Josiah Manifesto. Please welcome our dear friend, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Oh. Welcome. Hello. 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 Welcome. Good welcome. To be back. Well, we did a show yesterday and we're continuing because there was just so much information. And you have to wonder what possible connection could there be between America and an ancient mystery from the kingdom of Israel? Well, we're picking up where we left off yesterday. I just want to jump right back in. Before we do, there are some of you who didn't see yesterday's program. So could you kind of catch us up? with your new book, The Josiah Manifesto, and what were some of the mm. mysteries that we revealed yesterday? Yeah, it's what if God was speaking to us, telling us what to do, we're saying what's going on, what's happening in the world, yeah. that actually it is under control. And, and what if that he's giving us the prophetic hour that we're in, what, where we are, what's coming, and how to prepare, so how to good. stand for now and in the last days, how to overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, what if everything we've been, we've been experiencing, we've been part of this mystery, we may <laughs> not have realized it, that goes back to ancient times that actually gives from God the time, the pattern, the dates uh, that are happening. And that's what we, we kind of looked at that, the mystery behind uh, what happened for the last three years of COVID and the dates exactly, or the places exactly, um, but also then the mystery of our leaders from, from Donald Trump onward, even January 6th. And could it even give us indication of where it's going to go, where we're going to go politically? But also, and then the overturning of Roe versus Wade, that even that was part of the ancient thing. I'll, th I'll throw one quick thing that I didn't say last time, and that is in the Bible, in the book of Esther, there is, there, is, there is a decree that's issued that brings destruction, death, or it's supposed to bring death. It's from Haman. And that's that when he wants to wipe out the Jewish people. Right. Well, the Bible says it was, on, it was appointed for Adar 13, Adar 13. Adar 13 is the 13th day of the 12th month, okay? 13th day of 12th month linked to decree of death and destruction. Roe versus Wade was heard before the Supreme Court on, on December 13th, the 13th day of the 12th month, day wow. of death and destruction. Wow. But then when you go, you go on with the book of Esther, Esther and Mordecai issue another decree that's going to nullify the first decree. So it's the decree of the, that's going to nullify the decree of death and destruction and save life. And that the day that it went forth, the Bible says, was Sivan 23. The, the case that would overturn Roe vs. Wade went to the Supreme Court on, Jan, on June 15, 2020, on that Bible's calendar, Sivan 23, the day of the decree that will overturn the death and destruction decree. I mean, mm -hmm. who could put that together? <laughs> wow. I love Only it. God. That is so amazing. So um, 
You need to watch <laughs> yesterday's program, if you didn't, part one. Uh, it's really good. But you, you also touched on, and we won't go into it, but uh, the events that really shook America. Oh, yeah. Uh, that were actually foretold in the ancient calendar, which is the Old Testament, mm -hmm. and it would start with the plague. Yeah, the thing is that if you look at God's ancient calendar, it's in Leviticus 23, he gives appointed days. And the amazing thing is when all these shakings came on America, it seemed like everything's out of control. Well, they actually all happened according to the appointed days of God's calendar. Not only what would happen, but the type of thing, but also when. So the first appointed day is, is Passover. In the, in the, it's the first holy day in the Bible. And the, the, that's what's unique about that, this, this, uh, um, this day is that it's the only one that's linked to a plague. What does Passover mean? It's because Passover because it's a plague that passes over your land. So it's linked to a plague. So it, it, when does it come? It comes in the springtime. It comes in, it comes in March, April. Well, March, April, when it came, when Passover came, America was dealing with a plague passing through the land, as it does on Passover. But Passover is also the first time in world history that you have a national lockdown, where God says, you're going into your house, stay in your house until the plague has passed through the land, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens? So when, when we're, Passover hits America, hits the world, we're all locked down and we're all, because a plague is passing through the land. Actually, Jewish people on Passover are in their houses and they're, we have to recount the ancient time when we were in Egypt and we were all in our houses locked and uh, the plague was passing now, we couldn't go out. While, up, while they're actually locked in their houses and a plague is passing through the land. Actually, in, in Israel at that time, the government said on that day on Passover, there's a curfew, nobody can leave their house until morning. It was the first time in 3,000 wow. years because of a plague. So that all came true exactly. Okay, what's the next appointed day? The next appointed day is, is called Shavuot. We know it in, in, in Greek as Pentecost. That's a Hebrew holy day. And what is that? It's the day of the fires of the spirit, the tongues of fire, the baptism of fire. The next shaking of America is going, therefore going to involve fire coming on America. And so when this feast comes, as it's coming, fire breaks out over the cities. Remember, summer of rage, you know, Shavuot, Pentecost opens up the summer harvest. So it go, it's fire again. The thing is, when this happens, the exact date was May 28th. The Jewish people are lighting the candle, lighting fires, lighting their candles, uh, and they begin it. That night was the night that it exploded fires on America. That was the night, when, remember when the police station went up in fires, mm -hmm. and, and it was all over the city. It wasn't just Minneapolis, now it spread over. That was Shavuot, that was, that was Pentecost, the time of fires. And it went right into Pentecost Sunday when, when Christians are celebrating the fire of the Spirit, there was fire all over the land. Then it goes to the day that we, that, which is called the Feast of Trumpets, the Rosh Hashanah. But actually the Feast of Trumpets is called Yom Hadin in Hebrew, which means the day of judgment. And what, but the judgment is, is different. They, Jewish people on, the, on Feast of Trumpets, they look to God as the judge who sits in his court you know, I mean, the heavenly court, and he passes verdict on what's going to happen, judgment and, and the year and all that. So it's all focused on the, the God as judge and the court of God. Well, as the day comes on America, on the Feast of Trumpets, all of a sudden, something happens to our high court. And all, the, all eyes turn to the high court, the Supreme Court, because something happens. It says on, on the Feast of Trumpets, God decides who will pass from the earth. On that day, day on Friday, September 18th of the day, time of shaking, Feast of Trumpets, a chief justice passes from the earth. And that is, that is Ruth Ginsburg. And the thing is that it is announced just at sundown, just when this all begins. And the thing is, it says, and, and, and it was because, it's not about a person, but because of what happened on that day, that is what opened the door for the overturning of Roe versus Wade mm -hmm. on the Feast of Trumpets. And the thing is, you know, because we kind of say, you know, you know, that's our high court, but God says, you know what, there's a higher court. Yes. You know, you, you could, because yes. it was the Supreme Court that actually ruled for Roe versus Wade, which led to 60 million children being killed. God says, no, no, I'm the judge, you know, and I can overturn your verdicts. In fact, mm -hmm. and, and the other thing about, about the Feast of Trumpets is that it's the beginning of the days of repentance. It's called Teshuvah, repentance, where you're supposed to turn away from your evil. Well, the very event that it ushers it in, the very event, and on that day, ushered in America being able to overturn its ancient evil, even the Supreme Court to repent of its evil, it all began on that day. And one of the things that happens on that day is there's a special ancient prayer where it's prayed and they say, God, 
reverse the evil of the decree. Reverse mm -hmm. the evil. And then it wow. literally began on that day. I wow. mean, wow. God is the judge. Yes. So good. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned the day of turning. Yes. And yes. what does that have to do with the turning of America's yeah. force? The, the next day after trumpets, uh, well, here's the thing. Th th this is the only book. I, I usually keep myself out of the books or not. I don't mention, you know, but 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 where I witnessed it. I mean, the one thing I witnessed, one was Fidel Castro and that prophetic thing. Yeah. You know? uh, the other was this. And that was like during the time of, of when all this was happening, something that we had, we were led to have in Washington, D.C. And, and around the country. And Daystar was part of it, was blessed by covering it all. And that was called, it was the day of, National Day of Prayer and Repentance called The Return. And we were in Washington, D.C., and we had thousands and thousands of people on the National Mall praying in repentance, interceding for America, and watching by Daystar and around the country um, uh, all, and around the world. So we're all praying for repentance. There's an ancient day on, in, the, in the calendar of Israel, and, and that day that day was called Shabbat Shuvah. Now, Shuvah, you know what it means? The return. Hmm. So there was a day that's appointed to return, to turn to God. It's called the day of turning when a nation is supposed to turn to us. And we didn't know. You know, you don't have to know. I say, it tells me, you don't have to know what you're doing in God. You just right. have to know the one who's doing it. You know, right. and so you walk into it. So it was that day. But the other thing was, and it's because of what happened on the Feast of Trump is we couldn't have, have you know, known. But Trump had to, had to appoint his last Supreme Justice. He had a real small window to do it. Yeah. And so he had to do it. And that one was going to be the vote that would overturn Roe vs. Wade. So the, the overturning of, that, of Roe vs. Wade was set in motion when he, not, when he set in motion that nomination. That's beautiful. When did he choose wow. to do that? He chose to do it on Shabbat Shuvah, the day of the turning. Wow. Which is also when we're in the mall praying for repentance and the turning of America, specifically an abortion. I was, I, was, I was actually led to smash a jar, which is what Jeremiah did when he was looking about what they did to the children. And we're praying for that. And at the same moment, Trump is on the White House Mall setting in motion the turning, the turning on the day of the turning. So there was an ancient instrument yes. involved. Sure yeah. about that. Yeah, I, we, were, we were on the National Mall. And by the way, it was like these days where we kind of are now on the calendar. And, and uh, you know, I was led at one point and said, we got to seal all these prayers. We've been praying, but now we're going to seal it in one moment. So I called, I said, if you have shofars, come up on the stage. So, you know, the shofars, the trumpets, the ram's horn. So we have six men with the talits and, the, you know, are ready on the stage. And I said, okay, to everybody, I said, I said, well, right now we, we got to seal everything we prayed for. And, and I said, I believe it was like 50 years of prayer, though. But I said, we're going to seal it now. And, and, and when you hear the sound of the shofar, shout like Jericho, shout. Okay, so I said, okay, we sealed this and let the power of God go forth. And I said, go. The shofar is blasted. Okay, now in the Bible, the shofar is a sign of God's power. It's also, it's, all, it's a sign of Jericho when the walls came down. Yeah. You know, sound of all, a breakthrough, sound of Jubilee. And it's the year, it's the abortion year of Jubilee. And so we're, we're doing it. At that moment, on the White House mall lawn, Trump is standing there. With at his side is Amy Coney Barrett, who is this child of the night. And they're standing there. And at that moment, he opens his mouth and be, it begins the overturning of abortion to nominate her at that moment. Now, we looked at the videotape. And when the blast came, it was 5 o'clock, 4 minutes, and the 33rd second. At the White House, he opens his mouth, 5 o'clock, 4 minutes, and the 33rd <laughs> second. Wow. So at the exact moment. Ooh, our steps are exact, ordered. <laughs> exact, exact moment. And so we think of it. So we're sounding. It's not, I'm just saying this is, and we don't know what we're doing, but God does. God yes. is exact. And yes. so at the exact moment, and what it's saying is, one, the, begin, the overturning of abortion, and of Roe versus Wade, began with the sound of God's power. Mm. It was at the sound of Jericho at that yeah. moment. Okay. You wanted to talk about God. And, and here we have the American Jehu standing, <laughs> ready to pull, pull down the Temple of Baal. We have the child of the Nile. It's the year of Jubilee. The trumpets are sounding. And the only regret I had for a moment mm. was that I said, God, you know, I looked and I said, I called up the There were six guys, six, six people. I said, it would be nice to have seven, Lord. <laughs> you know, seven trumpets, Jericho, you know, you know, Book of Rose, seven trumpets. And then it hit me, wait a minute, there was a seventh trumpet. What's the name of our president, the president? Mm -hmm. Trump, Trump means yes. trumpet. So when I said wow. trumpets go, the Trump sound, the seventh trumpet sounded, <laughs> sounded on the White House Mall on the year of Jubilee, and it set in motion the overturning. That I mean, only amazing. God can do this. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what your politics are. It doesn't it's matter true. if God is saying, I, I, I am in charge. Wow. That's so good. <laughs> and then uh, let's go on to what is the Phineas factor? Okay. 
First of all, um, somebody, somebody had given me um, a word when, when I was about to write The Return of the Gods, and, and, and they saw a vision. They saw me standing in front of these al all these altars, and, and it said, God said, bring a word, prophesy to the altars. When I spoke, the altars, in the, in the vision, the altars cracked open and spirits went. The biggest altar of our, of our time is, was Roe versus Wade, was, was where we offered up children, you know. Mm -hmm. So what happened on that day was the breaking of the altar. Okay, and the thing is, when, when Roe vs. Wade was overturned, and the thing is that I was with Perry Stone at the time, okay, and, and, I, and I was finishing the book. I'm getting ready to finish the return, and I said, Perry, I think tonight I'm gonna be able to finish the book, on, and it's your birthday. So he said, oh, that's great. I'm, so I tried, but I couldn't. I kept falling asleep, I couldn't. So, I, so it ended up being in, the, in the, the morning. The next day, I finished the book. Then, then they drive me to the airport, Perry Stone's guy, and I'm, I'm heading to the airport, I'm, I'm heading to my gate, and the guy says, Rabbi, Rabbi, he says, wait, stop. He says, my wife just texts me, he says, and I see that he said, they just overturned Roe versus Wade. So the day that I finished the return of the gods, the guy, the guy said, when you bring, you get the word, it's the, the altar's broken. So the day was that, oh, that was the day. That, you know, that's what led to this right now, it was that day. I'm in the airport, I look at my, I look at my cell phone, and I just, you know, I, a, a scripture comes up, and it's all about, Phineas. Now, Phineas is the guy, when Israel turned away from God, a plague broke out. And so he, but he rose up, stood for God, did a prophetic act, a righteous act, and it says the plague started going away. So I said, could that be? Could that happen? Could that have happened? So I look back, and it turns out, you know, when you look, you know, you know, the, the Supreme Court decision didn't happen. In, it's not voted in June. It's voted much earlier. It's released then. It was voted earlier. In the month of January, of 2022, that last year, the, the plague was at its peak. It was three times higher than it had ever been. It was gonna continue for years, okay? But in that same month, Judge Alito is when he wrote his, the decision that was gonna overturn abortion. And it finished it at the end of February. That's when the leak came after that. But that's, so, that's when he finished it. That was, that was what was gonna, that sealed it. And at that moment, something happens. When you look at the graph, the plague is up here. And all of a sudden, within a few weeks, it goes down to one eighth of what it was. Mm -hmm. And it never goes back to where it was. That's when it changed. And the thing was that he was the Phineas. He, the act that he did, and the thing is interesting because what's his name? His name is Samuel. And, and people have been praying for 50 years. Samuel means God has heard. God has mm -hmm. heard your prayer. And the thing is when you look at the CDC, the record, when, they, when you look at the rates of with COVID, and there, it, it, it has a date when it was at its peak with, with the death rate, it's at its peak, and then suddenly it collapses. The date, it says the week ending, January 22nd. January 22nd, that day was the day that began the jubilee of Roe versus Wade. It was on the exact day wow. that it plummeted. Yeah. Okay, you talk about in the book, what is the sign of the broken altar? This is what happened, what we saw was colossal, it was gigantic. The breaking of Roe versus Wade, that is the breaking of the most brazen altar we've ever had in our lifetime. It's never happened before. And, th and this, in the Bible, this is a sign. That is the sign of revival. God, you know, when, you, they, when they had revival, they didn't have gospel tent meetings, that's great. They broke the altars of the gods. They went up to the altar of the gods. So what it's saying is, it's saying that, there is, that this is a sign given of what can be, that there can truly be revival. This is, I'll put it this way, this is all linked to an ancient king because there's only one person in the Bible who's linked to the broken altar more than anybody else, and that's Josiah. His birth was announced, it was prophesied with a broken altar. He's the one who broke all those altars. He went down to the Valley of Hinnom where they were killing the children, and that's what happened with Roe versus Wade. So this is all Josiah. So what it's saying is, this is prophetic. We are at the Josiah moment. The Josiah moment on one hand is that the time is late. The culture is, is heading away from God to judgment. On the other hand, God is giving a chance for revival. Mm -hmm. And so this is what Josiah was. When Josiah came, that, the secrets with Josiah, that's why the last 100 pages of the book are the manifesto of Josiah. I was about what, to say, what is his manifesto? Yes. <laughs> what, what do we what, do? What, what, do were we the, do what are the secrets of, Masa, of, 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 of Josiah? Because he, he came at the Josiah moment, the, the nation was offering their children, they were into sexual immorality, they were into gender confusion, they were into everything. And yet God raised up this man, one man, 
change the history of the nation. One man. And, he, and so what were the secrets? He was born to an evil father, an evil grandfather, mm -hmm. and yet he just stood for God and he just, oh, he wasn't corrupted. He kept himself pure. He not only did that, he wasn't living on the defensive. He was living on the offense. He literally changed his culture. He changed, he, God gave revival mm. to that land. And, and, it, and God actually forestalled the judgment because of one man. So the secret is in Josiah. I mean, meaning, I believe God is, the, all these things are pointing to Josiah. And so what were the secrets? How did he do it? You know, and so, the, so as you said, what's the manifesto? The last hundred pages, or the first two, the first two thirds are the mysteries. The last part is what do we do now? How do we overcome? How can we, how do we keep our family safe? You know, with it, how do we, how do we, how do we withstand what's happening and not just withstand it, actually affect the world around us? Right. What does God have for us now? Not just for now, but for the end times, because this is the end times, you know, so how do, what do we do if the, if the government says, okay, now you're going to have to go against God. Mm -hmm. What do we do? How do you, how, what are the secrets? How did he do it? You know, and that is what the whole last part of the book is. So, so we are, so to answer the question before, we're at a crossroads right now. You know, we're, we're either ne we're nearing judgment on one hand, or, or we have a last, sh a last chance, which is what Josiah did. So I believe God is calling us to be Josiahs. You know, um, I was going to say, who is the Josiah of our generation? Well, we're, we're, we are to be. We, you are to be. We all can we, we be all, We are to be the Josiah generation. One man, literally, he, he changed the course of his history. One gener Josiah generation can change the course of the world. And the thing is that that when you look at it, Josiah was actually born for his age. You know, you know, we look at the age and we say, oh no, what's going on? We're born for it. You know, God chose us for this. Yes. You, know, yes. you know, you know, when people say, you know. You know, like, oh, I don't want to be in this. I don't want you. Well, listen, what's the most exciting time of a movie? The last 15 minutes. <laughs> so God put us in the last 15 minutes. You know, I mean, it's exciting. This could, you know, That's Josiah was point. showing that, you know, Josiah was radical because the days were radical. Mm -hmm. He had to be radical. We have to be radical. So we, the church. The church has to be radical. We, people of God, you got to be radical. Okay, gotta, tell us one of his secrets. One uh, of the secrets from the, the manifesto. There, there's so many. Um, one, okay, uh, there's so many. One, one is, okay. One is, one is, okay, he had to, he, first he had to wean himself from the, the evil culture. He had to separate himself. In order to be a light to the world, you have to separate, you have to cut off uh, d what you're dependent on that is not good. You know, so what, what you're watching. Yes. What, what you're, you're watching, hearing. Exactly. What you're doing. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, I they, mean, it, it really... I mean, Total. culture is affecting our yes. families just it by is. turning the TV on. But how do you yeah, protect I, I, your kids? I, I, how do you it? protect your kids? Absolutely. Well, one of the things I said to here, like you know, these are radical times. People are sending their children to schools to be ed to, to undo everything they've done in their life. To college is spending thousands of dollars yeah. to undo everything you've done. And, and you know, so the thing is that the thing is, number one, you got to take note of it. Uh, Josiah yeah. had to separate from these things. He had to say we and and Josiah also had to build a, a build a a godly way. You know, we have to come up with a godly way of dealing with our children. We have to have alternatives because what's What's happening is the culture is pulling away all the props that used to be supporting God. Support. So we have to build it ourselves. We have to establish godly ways, godly families, godly yes. networks, godly, godly media. You're doing it, but but we have to for the end times. We have to be unto our. Un, we have to be a light un, from God without the world, and then be a light to the world. Josiah was plugged into God. Was plugged, you know you know what brought the revival? They discovered the word in the temple. That's how it started. The word. He was plugged into the spirit. You know he was he went by the spirit. He you know. The, the, the Bible says in the last days, the spirit will be poured out. So we're not, these are not times to fear. These yeah. are, I believe these are going to be the most exciting times. And as I said, Josiah was revolutionary. He lived mm. a radical revolution. The church has stopped being revolutionary That's for a true. long time. You know, the original church in the book of Acts was revolutionary, radical, not of the culture. Then it, we got power. They got, got money, got this, and we became status quo culture. Yeah. Well, we're, th those days are over. We are not of the culture. We are, we are of God. We are to be radical revolutionary. That's the only way we can stand, but it's a good thing. Those who stand are going to so become good. like Josiah mm -hmm. because it's going to force us to become like who we're supposed to be, like the book of Acts. So another thing is that in the last days, everything re goes back to the beginning. In the, in the beginning of the age, you, ha you had Israel in the world. End of the age, Israel. Beginning of the age, you had a pagan culture. Well, it's going there now. But so if everything's going back, we have to go back to where we were at the beginning of the age, which is the book of Acts, yes. you know? And that's what Josiah, Josiah went back right to God before they fell away. And he, and he became this radical sign for God. Mm -hmm. But it could be our greatest hour, truly, but we have to rise to it. So for people who are watching, um, I know that people are interested in, in understanding end times. You just said yeah. we're living in the end yes. times. Um, why do you say that? What is it that you see that makes you realize 
this is a different end times than say 10 years ago? I mean, right now, oh, well, well, one is the first thing, again, again, remember, you know, I mean, I, you're talking to somebody who used to be an atheist who didn't believe in God, and it was biblical prophecy and, and a locomotive train that got me saved. You know, so I saw, wow, this is real. I didn't know that. I mean, I couldn't mm -hmm. argue with it. So Israel and all that. But one of the biggest signs of the last days that people don't do when they get into prophecy is the apostasy. Because every day you turn on your television set and you say, oh, what are they doing now? Yes. And it's not, it's not a, listen, there are liberal people who are saying, this is crazy. Not it's just true. Christians, not just conservatives. <laughs> This is crazy. What are we doing to the children? This is exactly. absolutely. What are we doing to our? What are Listen, we doing? Listen, when with you free have Mar yeah. saying this yeah. is crazy, it's, like yeah. you know, something you know, is you're going. in the end times. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. you're in the end times. And and it's you. Know, you have J, you have the JD Rowling's of, of, of Harry Potter saying the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's going so crazy. It says in the last days, you know, what is it? men shall be lover of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, evil will increase. It will not be natural without natural love. You know, all these things. Um, and you know, so aside from Israel, we're watching it every single day. It's getting so radical, yeah. but we have to get radical. So I know that it's important that we, number one, we don't be fearful. Yes. And that we understand that God has allowed us to live in this season yep. and that oh. we believe um, and stand for revival. Yes. And awakening. Starts with us. Starts with, it each starts other. with yes. us and that we start reaching out to those around us that yes. we occupy yes. until he comes and not get that escape mentality, no. even though we believe in a rapture. We no. occupy until he comes. If we God, keep didn't, if God didn't want us here, why are we here? We have a job to do. You know, that's another thing about Josiah. Josiah was not a passive agent, a passive person just sitting back and saying, okay, let me try to survive. He was active. He acted mm -hmm. on his culture. We are not to so be, good. we're not to be on the defense. We're doing the offense. I don't care what the time is. You know, mm -hmm. the greatest warriors were on these times, Paul and Josiah. Did. So this is our time. Yes, yeah. spread the gospel too. Go on the offense mm -hmm. in, in love, you know. Yeah. So other than the awakening we're waiting on, an influx of souls coming into the kingdom and all of these biblical signs that we're seeing, what, what is on the calendar of time for people that maybe don't even understand in times? What is the next big well, well, event? One th okay, one major thing, is it's not stopping, and that is, it's called, I call it polarization. People think, oh, the end times are just bad. No, it's bad and good. It's light and darkness. But the grays are disappearing. You know, the grays are, you know, you know, nominal Christianity is going to disappear. So or we're going to see clearly. Yes. because it, It'll be black and it's white. Gonna, it's going to get clearer and clearer. And you got to go on one side or the other. And if yeah. you don't go on the, with God, you're going to be swept up on the other side because the gray, the, the gray ground is not going to be there anymore. Mm -hmm. When we were growing up, we had, you say, everybody said they were a Christian. The gray, so you got to choose God now. Right. So, so that is where we are. And something's going to give, something's got to give in America with the culture because it's going, it's got to, something's going to give, but we are in, we got to choose now. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. Well, hey, it went fast, then it got. Yeah. That's why I wrote the book. We so are out good. of time, Thank but I want you to know God. that God is calling each of us to stand up like Josiah. Yes. Yes. Now is the time for radical boldness for the gospel. We can see mm -hmm. a mighty revival even in the darkest of times. And if you're watching today, you want to be that yes. bold voice of righteousness just like Josiah. Mm -hmm. Then again, that's why that number's on the screen. We would love to pray with you, encourage you today. If you're dealing with an issue, in your body, if you need healing, if you need to receive Jesus, if you haven't prayed that prayer and invited Jesus into your heart, then that's why that prayer line number is on the screen. We would love to pray with you. It's so simple to do, but I really sense there are a lot of people struggling with some physical issues, and I just believe God wants to touch you supernaturally, and you're gonna be a part of this end time revival. God wants to use you. It's yes. time to get up and say, you know what? I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to be a part of what God has called me to do. I do want to thank Rabbi Khan for joining us once again. Pick up a copy of his new book, The Josiah Manifesto. It's available now. And for more information, you can visit him online at hopeoftheworld.org. As always, let us know how Table Talk is touching your life. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Rabbi Khan. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.